Lizzie T Radio Show. everyone welcome this evening to another show Lizzie T radio show and I apologize to the listener and to our guest or special guest that's been waiting we've been having some technical problem but any every great show is always that way it's always good and this evening is not an exception and we have a very very special guest we've been having a lot of lot of amazing singers lately and today we have a lady a special lady that uh, I wasn't able to meet but my husband uh, the photographer was able to shoot some amazing shots from this lady. Her name is Enuma. She is a, a vocalist, composer, and a multi-instrumentalist who plays an organic blend of R&B, soul, folk, rock, and jazz. The name Enuma means heaven, heaven's no. I love that name. And I was going to ask her what the name meant, but I'm glad she mentioned it and she sent a, um, the meaning of it. Um, she's an artist who has hailed from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, and she's settled in the multicultural landscape of Toronto. She's probably drawn her from Jamaican African roots from uh, where she uh, her background is. And Uma has taken a huge drive in her young career. And we have her on the line. Are you there, Anuma? Yes, I am. I thank you so much for calling in, and I apologize you had to wait a little bit, but it's all good. And uh, how are you? How are you doing this evening? I'm great. I'm, I'm still on a high from a performance I had last night. How are you? <laughs> You're still on a high, and that's always good. We're doing great, and again, we're very, very happy that you're able to make it to the show. I know it's late, but our shows are late, and they're always good, and they're always amazing, and I'm so proud that uh, you're able to come in and call us. So listen, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been a musician? And that's question number one. And uh, when did you decide it, question number two, when did you decide that this is what you want to do, and this is your career, and this is what you want to pursue? Um, well, I've been singing uh, since I was a, a young child. Um, I was raised in a church, and I would sing on a choir. I would sing as part of a, a, a gospel duet. But I didn't actually start playing an instrument to learn how to play the guitar, so I would uh, have the ability to accompany myself um, when I would perform. And um, so I've been uh, actually gigging in Toronto for about three years, like my first show was in uh, August of 2010 at Grossman's Tavern, and I've just been playing around town ever since, and um, this year I'm, I'm hoping, well, I will be uh, playing um, outside of town and, you know, across the border and whatnot, so I'm excited for that. Oh, yeah, um, in term- sure. So in terms of um, when I decided I wanted to do it, um, I've always want. I've always loved music, and I've always been into dancing, and I've always been, you know, singing, as I've said. But I, I finally decided that I wanted to pursue it as a career for myself. Um, there wasn't an exact point so much as it was just like a gradual realization that it was something that was possible and that it was viable and that it was actually just kind of happening. Anyways, and um, the more it became a reality, the more that I was doing it, uh, the more I felt uh, that it was something that I should be doing, and that I would not, I would rather be doing this than anything else. So, so yeah. So you would say about three years ago, that's when you decided this is your goal, this is your calling, this is what you want to pursue. I guess so. It would be about <laughs> three years ago, even though I've been involved in music. Even just as a singer, since I was a child, I didn't think it would be something I would be um, doing as much as I am now, which is kind of crazy to think that I am so involved in it and that I've been so I've been so uh, well supported and well received by people, um, and it's a, a tremendous honor and it's a great feeling. 
That's fantastic. And I have been listening to some of your music, and I know John loves what you do, and you're awesome at it, and you're great at it. <laughs> and um, I wanted to be able to download some of your songs and uh, to our Blog Talk Radio show. Unfortunately, that's the difficulty that I was having. But nevertheless, uh, anybody who is listening to Numa right now will be able, I will put a link into our Blog Talk Radio show and into our Lizzie T fan page and people will be able to download or, or be able to listen to all of your great stuff. I know you have some stuff on YouTube, and people will be able to follow you also on Twitter. Uh, I will put the, the link in Yuma Music and uh, on Facebook, so that's great. Now tell me, what inspires you to do what you do? And, and I know that looking at the pictures that John was able to take of you, uh, y you seem very concentrated, very into it, what, what, what inspires you to do what you do? I mean, you have some sort of inspiration. I know your background, but there's always something that gives you that extra. Well, the, the ability to sing or the ability to paint or the ability to play music is like a, a gift, a gift from, you know, the divine being above from the universe. And um, when I was back at church, the act of performing was more than entertainment. It was a means of connecting to people or sharing a gift, that gift with them, or it was a means of helping people or, or being helped um, through through the use of your, your gift um, as some sort of vessel, you know, of mm -hmm. God, but in using your abilities to, to help people. And um, when I started... Um, playing the guitar. It was around the time where I really started to write music. And um, and when I say write music, I mean my own lyrics as well as composing the music I would be playing. Um, it was, a, it was a, a, cathar a cathartic process for me. It was a means of exercising some demons or dealing with some very um, troubling issues or, some, mm -hmm. or uh, navigating some turbulent waters in my life. And when I would perform these songs about my personal experiences, um, say, at a cafe or at a bar, you know, like I was no longer playing it in a church and in a congregation full of people, but people would still come up to me and would say, you know, that song about this really inspired me because, you know, I was, you know, mentally or emotionally abused by a partner, or this is how, so this is how I interpret it, and this is, this, I want to thank you for that, or um, people really connect with, with, my music in a way that is kind of mind-blowing and um, I don't necessarily write with the intention to help people uh, deliberately but I write with the intention to 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 um, kind of uh, spread a message of, mm -hmm. of empowerment or sometimes it's just really just to talk about the nitty-gritty of, of a situation that was very painful whether it was like a relationship I was in or whether it was um, separating from a belief system that that I was deeply you know involved in whether it's talking about falling in love with someone that maybe you shouldn't be like I just I just write about my experiences as as they've been but okay. I don't know if it's the way I play it but people tend to to connect with it and I, I really uh, think that the most fulfilling part of it is when people are not merely entertained, but they're inspired or they're changed or they, they understand where you're coming from or they feel like they un that you understand them. Absolutely. And, and uh, when you deliver, it's a gift. It's like what you said, it's a gift. And you have that gift, not, to, not only to be able to write your gift, to put it in words, to sing it, but you connect with the people that are listening to you. And people are uh, actually being touched by your words. And they can uh, associate what you're saying and what you're singing. And that's how the people usually say, this, is, this touch me or this talk to me. Because that gift, it, it transpired to others, which is amazing and it's great. And I'm really, really happy that you're doing what you like to do and you're, built, and you're being fulfilled and you're moving other people along with it. Now, let's talk about the future. What, what's the plan for the future for Enuma? Uh, the, plan to, the plan is to um, just play as much as possible because I'm such a strong 
proponent, not just as a musician, but also as a listener of live music. So I put such a strong emphasis on just playing as many shows as possible in order to um, perfect or develop my craft um, as a performer, because I could sound amazing on a recording, but if someone comes to a show to experience me live and I, I, I can't deliver, you know, like being able to deliver in person to somebody is more important than what I sound like in a recording that they can download or watch on YouTube. So my plan is, is to continue to perform as much as possible and connect with people face-to-face, face to face, especially in an age where everything is online, everything is through a screen, you know, whether face through Facebook or text messaging or Twitter. And I'm planning on uh, playing a series of shows or a number of shows outside of Toronto, whether it be in New York or Atlanta or Oshawa or Peterborough or BC or out in Halifax, like... I just want to be able to just spread my wings and connect with different people in different parts of, yeah, of the, of the world and hopefully take that even, you know, overseas. And um, in the future, I also plan to uh, sit down and record. That is, that is important. Um, and do an EP. Fantastic. And that was my next question. Any plans in the future to record a CD? And I guess that definitely you've answered the question. That is definitely in the plans. And I'm, I'm interested in what you said is that you want to sound to the audience, to a live audience, as good as you sound on a CD or, an, or on a recording on YouTube or on Facebook. And that's a very, very amazing challenge because a lot of musicians so sound fantastic when you buy their CD, but when you, do, when you listen to them live, they are completely different artists. Um, not worse, not better, but a completely different artist. So it's, it's amazing that you want to portray the same image that you have on your videos or on your uh, multimedia, but as well as life. That's great. And um, last but not least, and believe it or not, um, we're pretty much to the end of our show, and I want to thank you so much for calling in. Um, but advice, I, I, is there any advice for a new musician or somebody who is starting in this industry, as you know, is very, very competitive. Everybody wants to break through the musician, uh, the music industry, and it's very challenging. It's very competitive. Um, but somebody that is listening to us right now or later on will be listening to this recording. Anything that you want, be able to give them advice and what to do or what, how, how to hang on in this dream. My advice would be to, to play as much as possible, um, not not necessarily in the sense of practicing only because that can be kind of isolating and <laughs> lonely if you're sitting at home with you with yourself and, and whatever instruments that you're playing. But um, or if you're say a person that makes beats, you know, just sitting wherever you are in front of a computer screen, like it can be a very isolating type of experience. My advice would be to play as much as possible and. Um, even at open mics, just get out there, make connections, and because for the thir first three years that I've been playing, all of my opportunities have come via word of mouth. Before I had a fan page, before I had Twitter or YouTube or anything mm -hmm. like that, it was purely word of mouth how I was getting any opportunity or any gig, because someone saw me at open mic, or mm -hmm. so-and-so had seen me play, and they referred me to so-and-so, and I would say just keep playing, and be as social as, as possible and surround yourself with like-minded individuals who are also trying to do what you're doing. Meaning, if you're trying to make this a full-time thing, surround yourself with people who, who are either doing it full-time already, whether they're, you take them as mentors, or uh, people your age, or within your genre, or whatever it may be, that are also trying to do it full-time, because that fuels you. And it feels, it feels like a more collaborative, um, community-like endeavor. Um, and to have that support system and that, that network is extremely important. Then you'll be able to go farther a lot quickly, or if there's times you're discouraged, you have someone to turn to who's, who's in the same position as yourself and could give you a little bit of in, inspiration. Um, the show I had last night I, is my first headlining show. Um, Congratulations. Two, thank you. I played for two yeah, and a half hours straight. Yeah, I played for two and a half hours straight, but I had three special guests come up, and these special guests were 
two other singers and guitarists, one named Arya Zen, one other named Lily Mason, and one was a, a poet and a storyteller named Whitney French. And I enjoyed myself the most having them on stage with me. They are also young women who are artists and are talented and gifted in doing their, doing their thing to like another level, and it was just great to have them there. And I was inspired, they're inspired, and I had people in the audience who were also artists, even if they weren't artists, saying that they were inspired to do what they're doing by seeing me perform and seeing me perform with other people on stage. So just connecting yourself and having the right people around you at all times is very, very important. That would be my advice. Thank you so much, and those are wise, wise words. And again, congratulations on your big show. And three important things to the listeners and to everybody who is will be listening to this recording: that uh, to be out there. That you know, and that is not just on the singing industry. I think it's every industry. We tend to be hidden behind our computer and trusting that Facebook will do their magic and uh, Twitter mm -hmm. will do, but not necessarily. We need to be out there, which is great. I love that. And, um, you know, give it all. Give it all and do as much as you can out there. And by being out there, you feel yourself. You inspire yourself, but then you inspire other other people are inspired, are inspired by you. This is great advice, and I really, really thank you. And it's been a pleasure. You have to come back. We have I have to download some of the songs <laughs> that you amazingly play for the listeners to be able to know what, to, what your music is all about. Again, I will be putting a link to Lizzie T Radio Show for people to be able to connect with you. You all, all the great success. Um, I, we wish you the best, and thank you again for uh, calling in. Thank you for having me. Lizzie T. Radio Show.
Hello.